RT Maps comes with an SDK wizard, available on both Linux and Windows. This wizard generates a CMake project. Specify your package name, component name and destination folder. One package can contain multiple components. Generated files are inside the destination folder. You will find C++ source code as well as a package definition files there. The PCK info file contains the package version number and a small description. Let's run CMake to build and use this template. We specify the source code location and a build directory. On Windows, most of the Visual Studio versions are supported. You may also use other IDE as well. When finished, generate an open project. Here we have one H file and one .cpp file. This should compile out of the box. Using release with debug info parameter allows for debugging while maintaining execution speed. Let's build the project now. Now launch RT Maps to test this brand new package. Locate the package and load it into RT Maps. Drag and drop the component onto the diagram. This component has two inputs, one output and no properties. This component is actually a vectorizer that concatenates two integers on its output. Start the diagram. With the data viewer we see the concatenation of the two integer values. Save the diagram and then let's get back to the code. Each component is actually a C++ class deriving from MAPS component. This class contains a constructor in a macro, an input reader object to be able to read from its inputs and its associated data callback. In the implementation part, we have a section containing declaration of inputs, outputs, properties and actions. We also have the definition of the component's name, its version number and threading capabilities. In this project, we have two inputs, the first one in FIFO reader mode for triggering the component, the other one in sampling mode. Both inputs are defined to accept only 32-bit integer in this example. In the outputs declaration section, we have one output with data type 32-bit integer, with a buffer size of 2. This buffer size represents the capacity and it cannot be changed afterwards. If you do not know the size yet, you may specify 0. 0 indicates to the engine that you will perform the allocation yourself, later on, most often after having received the first data samples. Currently, no properties are defined, but we will create one later on. No actions are defined either. In this component, three member functions are essentials. The birth function is called once when you start the application. You will usually place there your member variables initialization and resources allocation if needed. Here we create an input reader object using the triggered method. Many other reader modes are available such as reactive and synchronized as seen in the previous tutorials. The core function is called in an endless loop by the engine while the component will run. It must contain a blocking call or your component will consume an entire CPU core there. The input reader read function blocks until data samples become available on the inputs. According to the chosen reading policy, before calling the callback, the death function is called once when you shut down the diagram execution. This is where you will usually free the resources. Here we reset the input reader for the next run. Finally, here is the callback function, called every time new input samples are available. First, we access the output circular buffer with an output guard. Here we get a handle to a writable slot from the output circular buffer. Then we can copy the values from both inputs to the output data sample. We manually set the vector size to 2. Last but not least, we transfer the timestamp. Remember, it must not be changed. The time of issue field will be set automatically. Now let's add a property called factor to multiply the output by a number. 
The second parameter determines the type of the property. 2.0 will end up into a float property, 2 an integer property, false, true a boolean property and, hello, a string property. For performance reasons, we can store the value of this property as a member variable. We use the birth function to assign the member variable value. We can directly multiply by the factor during the assignment. We also need to declare this property. Two options are possible. Directly increase the number of properties or specify minus one. Minus one will tell RT maps to auto detect the number of properties. This works for any static definitions like this. You cannot rebuild the component while it is still loaded in RT maps. You have to at least unload the package and reopen the diagram. We now see the factor property. We can run the diagram and see that the output is now twice what we receive on our inputs.